So here's the book. But how do it know? Um, I can really uh, recommend it. Uh, it's it's very understandable even if you don't have um, background knowledge in computer science or electronics. It's very well explained. And um, here on this page we have the venerable An uh, NAND gate, which takes two inputs A and B, um, and um, then it does a AND operation on that, which means um, it'll only um, return on if both of the inputs, A and B, would be on, but then it would invert the result. So that results in this logic table, where it only results in OFF if both uh, inputs are on, and in any other case, in any other combination, it will return an on result on the um, output C here. And that's exactly what I already modeled here in Ruby. I've defined um, a class gate NAND, which has uh, three nodes, A, B, and C. And um, I can set these nodes to, uh, well, at least the two input nodes here, I can set these to um, either on or off. In this case, I've used um, Boolean values, so I can set them to true or false. And then um, if I call the eval method, um, we'll uh, set C, the output, to NAND, to the NAND operation between A and B. We uh, get the state of A and the state of B. We uh, uh, use the AND operator on these and then we negate the result. So um, I've already built a few tests for this where we basically try all the uh, states Oh, uh, thanks for the input, Vimsurf. Um, yeah, that might actually be the case. I um, did try a little thing earlier today, and I guess uh, something is uh, in the way here. Just a second. Um, we'll simply mute this one here. And that should resolve the issue. Yeah, I, too, I had two audio inputs um, delivering the same. Okay, so um, here we evaluate the different combinations. 0, NAND 0 should return 1, 1 and 0, NAND 0 should return 1, 0, NAND 1 should return 1, and uh, only 1, NAND 1 should return 0. So if we run um, RSpec on this, it should actually work. All right, so the first um, challenge that we need to master is um, now that we have a NAND gate, we want to combine combine gates. Um, we uh, need some way to tell our software that uh, it should take um, different components and wire them together. And if one component um, changes its output, uh, that should be reflected as the input of a uh, depending gate. So if we, for example, want to, um, well, the most simple way would be um, if we take a NAND gate and we wire together both inputs, then this basically turns the NAND gate into an inverter because the, the AND 
um, operation will always uh, deal with identical inputs, either uh, both inputs are zero or both inputs are one. Um, there will only be two states in, in this case. And then um, this will be um, anded and inverted. And since um, zero and zero is zero, as well as one and one is one, um, will either negate the zero or the one, so the NAND gate will uh, act as an as an inverter. And um, I need to be able to um, build this circuit where I say, okay, take a NAND gate and then wire A and B together. So if I set A, B will be set as well, or vice versa. Um, and um, I'll have to think of a way to do this so that um, in the end we can build complex circuits. We need to be able to connect different nodes. Um, so that's basically something that I would do on the node level, wouldn't I? Yeah. And, um... I guess we can build this on the node level. So how about we have an array of connections and we'll have uh, A connect method that would simply add this node to our list of connections. Mm, I guess we don't need a named attribute here because we'll always connect nodes, I guess. So that's that. And if we state, if we change the state of a node, we'll have to update its connections. Oh, uh, wait. Um. Where we say connections each do node node state equals at state. So as soon as we change the state of a node, say an input node, we'll update the state of other nodes as well. There is potential for endless recursion, though.
And that's something that we need to manage eventually. sure if we should do that right now, but we'll run into this problem when we have some kind of a circular um, connection. We need to be able to track that so it doesn't get into an endless loop. I guess we'll cross that bridge when we, when we reach it. I have an idea, maybe um, use a stable flag that we set to false when we update a state. And then when it gets visited again and doesn't change, um, we can then define a stable state or something like that. Oh, well, we'll see. So, um... I guess we'll need a test for the base class as well. Oh, we don't have even... We don't have uh, tests for nodes in the first place, so yeah, it's time to create one. So that's the base spec.rb. Um, let me simply copy that. And that's a node base. It updates connected nodes. Oh, I guess it's because it's empty. Um, so we create a node one. And we'll use uh, described class new. Um, does this have an initializer? Uh, yeah, we'll have to pass in a component, but we can use a nil component in this case. So, we'll, we'll create node 2 as well, and we'd expect node 2 state to be true because at this point we'll set node one state to true node two will leave untouched for the time being which means this test is going to break uninitialized concept node yeah it's not node it's interface node i think And that's why we also need to move this into interface. Can it do that? Yeah, we can. Oh, no, it didn't. Uh, remove node and rename node to interface node. So. How about that? And uh, now the uh, 
there must be a more elegant way to do this than with this require relative. We are so spoiled by auto includes um, by auto loads in Rails. Expect false to respond to true, and perhaps you meant be true or be truthy. Yeah, I meant that. So, okay. Expected true got false, of course, because no two isn't wired up to um, node one yet. But if we do exactly that, node one connect node two. Still doesn't work. Mm, should though. Or reset. Reset. Oh wait. Uh, did we have the wrong? Um, yeah. So that's the actual test. Here uh, we have the setup. We create node one. Create node two. We connect node one to node two. The actual exercise of the test is node one state equals true, and then uh, we'll assert that node state, node two state is also true, and that works. Cool. Which means we could just for the fun of it extend our NAND test suite. Uh, it behaves like an inverter, where we say, okay, create me a NAND gate, described class new, and we'll use node A, and we'll connect it to and B and then we say NAND A state equals true mm. and we would expect NAND C state to be false. Yep, that works. Um, If you have an idea how to name these two tests, because we need two of them, I'm open for suggestions. So if we update the state of NAND A to false, we should get a true, which does work. And uh, by the way, if you have any questions, if uh, you'd like me to explain anything, or if you'd like to question my decisions, um, pop into chat and let me know. So, that does work. Um, does it work? For if we do not set any state. How does the NAND gate... Um, it initializes... I guess we could always... Um, evaluate the state from the initializer. In this case, I guess it's a good idea to um, create the nodes first and uh, then call eval so that we have um, a complete state. 
at the time of uh, in initialization. And I don't, I'm not a fan of using super. I could, of course, um, do something like... Um, uh, isn't and even... It doesn't have a base class, does it? So we could, of course, create a gate base class that always calls eval when it's initialized. But then we would have to uh, always use super in subclasses. And uh, that's easy to forget. And it's basically um, something that um, you need to know when you create a subclass. And I don't like that too much. Uh, I think it's a better approach to have a base class. Uh, why you only overwrite the uh, a, a specific method? So let me show you what I mean. So we create a base gate, and I guess we can simply steal that. Uh, except we don't have any nodes. But um, we have a setup method, or how would we call it? Uh, I'd call it setup, and then we'll call evil. So the setup method would be uh, an empty method for the base class. We could even um, raise an exception here, because a setup, well, yeah, setup needs to be it doesn't need to be... Uh... Mm, I guess a subclass should always overwrite a uh, setup, but um, that's debatable. So in this case, um, we'll call setup and then uh, uh, we'll end using eval. And uh, eval, in this case, of course, is going to be empty as well. And then we can make NAND a subclass of the base class. And instead of initialize, we'll overwrite the setup method. And um, that way, um, we don't have to take care of um, the initial evaluation. That's a better way, in my mind, to uh, build proper inheritance. And uh, avoiding to have to, having to call super all over the place. That should still work, but it doesn't. Uh, Initialize constant gate base. Uh, why doesn't it... Um Oh yeah, we we are running into um, order of uh, evaluation issues here. I needed the same here, so I guess we'll have to include that here. Still doesn't work. Why doesn't it? Uh, gate NAND, and we should overwrite this here. That's gate base. Here we go. Alrighty. Um, that means in my NAND test, I don't have to explicitly set the state of A to false. That should already be the case, and uh, in this state, the NAND output should already be true. Yeah, it is. Okay, that's cool. Great. So I guess we could go ahead and start building something more complex. Uh, so... Let me 
go here. Yeah, so that's the variation that we've already tested, where A and B are wired together. So it works like a uh, simple inverter. Actually, um, the nice thing about these NAND gates and um, the NOR gates as well um, is that you can actually use them as base components. Uh, you can build any, um, you can build any logic, any basic logic gate using NAND gates. We did do that for the inverter. And uh, if we use a NAND gate and uh, wire it up to be a, uh, and, and wire it up to an uh, NAND gate that's built as an inverter, we of course get an AND gate. It's an inverted, inverted, no, it's an inverted, inverted NAND gate. Let's actually try that. So, how about an AND gate built with NANDs? That should actually work. So we'll <sighs> we'll use an and we'll build an and gate, and that's going to use. Wait, uh... We don't deal with uh, components here, so all we have to do is create a new NAND. And uh, we'll create an inverter, and then we'll, of course, have to connect the inverter's A pin. with uh, the inverter's B pin. Hey Draconia, how are you doing? Welcome to the stack. Good to have you here. Uh, am I using multiple fonts in my IDE? No, I'm, I'm, I actually don't. Um, I'm using a font that has um, different, um, uh, that looks different for different, um, how's it called? Um, well, basically comments are the italic version of the font. And um, that's and, and uh, the italic version um, appears as this script um, font, and um, the regular versions of the font is just um, a monospaced font. The font is called Operator Mono. Uh, I think if you uh, enter exclamation mark font in the in chat, you'll get more details. It's not the font weight, it's the, the other thing uh, where you decide is it uh, italic or not. Um, I don't remember um, what this attribute is called. The font cut or something? I don't remember. Or font style? I'm, I'm not a typograph, so...
Okay, that's that. And then um, we'll connect the NAND C state, the output, with the inverters A node. That's that's so fun! I'm doing electronics in code. Oh, I wonder if this works. Uh, I think it doesn't because um, uh, we need to make sure that changing outputs also um, updates dependent components. So um, the circuit gets triggered if uh, an output is changed. Uh, so that's in the node as well. Well, that's state equals. And state equals, it does happen here. So it will happen. If we update the state of C, that should actually mm, change the state of inverter node A. That should trigger a change in inverter node B. And that should actually then update the inverters. Um, output C. Uh, maybe we need to have some symbolic names because it's a little confusing that we have... Uh, if, if we create an inverter... Uh, if you create an inverter component or gate, uh, it'll have a node A, a, a more or less invisible node B, that's not used because it's uh, uh, wired to A, and then it'll output its result as C, which is a little bit confusing. Maybe we should introduce some kind of symbolic names. And... Um, Yes, I'm rebuilding logic gates in code in order to make it more and more complex until we have built our own 8-bit CPU in, in Ruby. The thing is, I have very shaky hands, so uh, I need to avoid soldering as much as I can um, because I keep burning myself. And... Um, Building everything in Ruby is uh, much less prone to injuries. And yes, um, um, Operator Mono is a little bit steep uh, in its price, but there are um, other fonts that do something uh, similar. I'm not sure if it's uh, the Hack font that does the same, um, but if you um, search for programming fonts, uh, you should uh, find alternatives that might not be as uh, luxurious as Operator Mono, but um, decent alternatives. Oh, you recently talked about logic gates in school. That's amazing. So if you have any questions or um, if, if you'd like to me to, to explain anything or if you'd like to share something that you've learned, go ahead. Okay, so um, JetBrains Mono is a very good font as well, yes. So um, let me create a new integration test for AND gates. I guess we could simply use uh, the same set of um, tests here and just invert them. So, zero and zero, of course, should evaluate to zero. Uh, 
and yeah, we should probably use something more generic here. Uh, let me replace Nand with Gate. And in this case, we do have A and B. So that should do the trick. Block has too many lines. Uh, we should actually disable this for spec files. Draconi wrote, what's fascinating about the simple gates is that you can break down complexer logic to a few simpler gates. Yeah, I'm going to take the reverse approach and use NAND gates to build a whole CPU. Starting with building an AND gate from two NAND gates. Uh, the AND gate... Uh should work. Zero and zero. Oh, hey, <laughs> replaced and with gate. That's funny. Um, we should uh, evaluate one and zero to zero. Basically the opposite. Zero and one should be zero. And only one and one should actually result in one. And we can drop the tests for the inverter case. Wow, now I'm... Ah, oh, it doesn't work. Undefined method A for gate and. Ah, yes. Ha! Huh. Okay, uh, yeah, that's interesting. So our AND gate, of course, needs to have um, nodes connecting it to the outside world. So we do need the same setup. Here. And then we have an internal NAND gate. And in the end, we need to wire up A with A of the NAND gate. Thanks for following, Draconia. Happy to have you here. Welcome to the stack. We'll uh, connect our B node with the B node of our NAND gate, and we'll connect the output of our inverter, inverter C, with the C with the virtual C node of our AND gate. Guess, yeah, it's. Rubocop will complain a lot about these things. And I have to think about uh, how I can break this up. Um, maybe simply put things into um, separate methods. Uh, I'll deal with that in a moment, but I'd love to see this work doesn't. Uh, okay. Still undefined method A. For, oh yes, we do, don't do have um, the uh, accessors, I guess. A and B are going to be accessors. And C is going to be an, a reader, right? How did we do this with the um, NAND gate? Oh, they're all readers. Yes, of course, we don't write them from the outside. We only access their state. 
methods, so we can actually make all of them read only. Bam! We got our AND gate! This makes me very happy. So, we built our first complex... Well, it's not that complex, but it's a little bit complexer than the NAND gate where I was simply able to use um, uh, Boolean logic. I mean, I could have modeled that using something like transistors um, or gated uh, switches or uh, vacuum tubes, virtual vacuum tubes, but um, I guess at, I, I don't want to go um, even deeper into um, electronics than, than this, but um, we didn't use the AND... Um, We didn't use the AND uh, operation here. Instead, we used a NAND gate coupled with an inverter, uh, another NAND gate. Uh, I mean, we'll need an inverter anyway. Why not build that too? So uh, let's do some test-driven development now. Um, so I'll use this and I'll build a test. Uh, and we'll call it inverter spec.rb and uh, this is going to be a little bit um, less complex because uh, we'll simply evaluate 0 to 1 And one to zero. So that's going to be true and that's going to be false. And uh, we'll create our gate and we'll set A to false. There is not going to be a C. Well, I guess there's going to be a B as the output. And that's that. Uh, of course, this is going to break because we don't even have the gate inverter class yet. So let's build that inverter.rb. And uh, that's going to be module gate class inverter. And um, I guess we'll have, yeah, we, inverter needs to be derived from base, so we'll have to require relative base. The inverter needs a setup method where we Create a NAND gate. No idea why it doesn't, why it de indents this, but uh, well. And then we'll simply uh, use A and connect that to B. And that's our inverter. Of course, uh, we'll also need our two nodes A and B so A is going to be interface uh, input new I didn't use that for the AND gate did, did I? Oh, yes, uh, we need to call, call 
component self. Component self. So that's that. And B is going to be our output. And then we'll um, use A by connecting it to our internal NAND gate. And we'll connect the output of the NAND gate, C, to our output B. And that should be the inverter, which means we can simplify our AND gate. Where we actually say we'll use an inverter here. And we do not have to wire up uh, anything inside the inverter. We'll connect the output of the NAND gate to the input of the inverter. And we'll use the inverter's B output to connect it to our C output of the AND gate. How about this? Oh, now we've broken anything, something. Um, Unitialized constant interface input. I think it's interface node. Yeah. Where's the inverter? Interface node. That's amazing. We're getting there. Almost complete CPU, huh? <coughs> Excuse me. All right. I need, I think, uh, I think I need to cool down a little bit from this uh, success. So uh, give me a minute and I'll get myself um, a drink. Okay, I guess we could continue building uh, some basic uh, gates. Well, we already have the AND gate. I guess we could also go ahead and write the OR gate and the NOR gate. Let's see. Um, so we've just built the AND gate. And this is going to be a challenge. This is actually the circuit diagram of a single bit. consists of four NAND gates and um, these two NAND gates back here are a I think it's a called a JK flip-flop and these two NAND gates in front um, control if this bit, this flip-flop, gets set with the input, I, because that only happens if the set line down here is enabled. And this will get us into trouble because we have these strange um, wires that go back from the output of one NAND gate into the input of another and vice versa. And that's going to get us into an endless loop as it is now. Because, um, well, let's... Yes. Uh, oh, it's called an SR latch. Uh, thanks, Vim. Um, yes, that's uh, that's right. Um, this, in theory, doesn't work 
in an ideal circuit where um, information travels with um, no latency, um, the output of gate 4 here will become the input of gate 3 at the same time as its output becomes the input of gate 4. And uh, this will basically make this circuit oscillate forever. Um, and uh, th in practice this only works because um, there are, of course, um, manufacturing um, differences in, in the micro, uh, on the micro level that determine that one of these two gates will trigger a little bit faster than the other and that way it will create a stable state. And um, uh, that's exactly what I'm referring to, um, which is going to be a challenge because, of course, um, in uh, our code, we need to avoid um, going into something like that. Now, um, our code does uh, not do everything at the same time, so that's certainly an advantage here. If we uh, go to the base circuit here, update connections uh, updates one connection after the other. So um, there is a built-in delay here. There's a certain order uh, in which uh, things get set. However, um, that might not be sufficient because um, let's take another look. So, for example, we let's assume we build this circuit and um, uh, we have created um, gate 3 here and it gets initialized. Uh, we assume, say, that both inputs are false, so it'll evaluate its result to true, which is wired to gate 4. Uh, we'll get a true up here. Let's assume this is still false, um, which means um, we'll get um, a false here, which feeds back into here. So gate three will be re-evaluated with the uh, false and the false, which still evaluates to true but triggers an update of four and so on. So this will um, run in an endless circle. Now, that's exactly, I think, where the stable state that I mentioned earlier should set in. Because, uh, think with me, um, let's assume both of these are false. Uh, that means this is true, goes into here, true and false is uh, false, inverted is true. Oh, and now we have false and true, which creates a new state. However, false and true results also in... Uh, maybe should, we should write it down. We'll start with false and false, which results in true. So down here we have true and false, which results in true. Now we have false and true. which results in true, still true. No, it's, yes. Which means the output does not change. And if the output doesn't change, we shouldn't update our connections. At this point, we could actually stop evaluating. Not sure if this is sufficient, but it might save us in this case. So let's try and build that. Um, 
it's not going to be a gate anymore. I guess we need to introduce a new namespace here. Uh, down here on the lib level. I guess we call it circuit. And uh, it'll be a bit. So our gate Let's take a look at the land gate again. Yeah, okay, so if a node Okay, update connections. That should happen at the gate level, I think. have to evaluate our state first, compare it to the previous state, and if it hasn't changed, we don't update the node's output. We can do that on the node level, though, by Doing this, uh, let's. Iton Futuro, hey, how are you doing? Welcome to the stack. We are building electronics as code, which then runs on electronics. Um. So uh, I'll call this new state. And uh, if new state is not our current state, then we'll update our state and only then we'll also update our connections. Okay, uh, we'll do a return if new state equals old state. Otherwise, whoops, we'll assign the new state and uh, update our connections. That should at least eliminate a few of the recursions I'm afraid of. So far, it's been fun. Um, we've started with an Anand gate, where we actually use um, Boolean logic to evaluate its state. But then uh, we used this NAND gate as the basis of a new inverter gate by simply connecting both inputs of the NAND gate with each other. And uh, then we used a NAND gate with an inverter to build a, an, an AND gate. So, um... With this, 
Yeah, that's 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 a nice circuit breaker, so to say. Does it still work? No, it doesn't any work anymore. The AND gate and the inverter doesn't work anymore. Hmm, how is that? Let's take a look at the inverter first. And the inverter fails for... Uh, zero to one. Here we set state of A to false, which it already is. And I think that's because... Update connections is one thing. a new NAND gate, we connect those two wires, we set, um, we connect everything, and the constructor will then evaluate this uh, inverter. Inverter needs to have an eval method. Inverter, the these uh, derived these these composed gates don't have an eval method. So, when eval gets called, it doesn't do anything. Um, in this case, we would have to call evil for the NAND gate. So we would have to have a something like this.
Oh, still. Uh, maybe not use instance variables here. Still doesn't work. That's interesting. to see how this works in practice so let's uh try and debug this so we have our gate oof that's pretty complex already our inverter gate which should have an A and a B, right? Gate A is our input node it's connected to the other input node Wait, 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 wait. What's going on here? We have our A node that's connected to the A node of our NAND. Okay, yes. step through code with pry or do, would I need to use buyback for that? Okay, now um, things are getting complicated. Let's see. We have our inverter and um, we have our NAND gate and that's the only component here, yes. So we create a new NAND gate that evaluates to true because um, the inputs will be false by default so the output will be true. You connect A and B of the NAND and connect our inverter A to the NAND A which implicitly then also connects to the NAND B and we connect the NAND's output C to our output B. And when eval gets called for our inverter by the constructor, we'll evaluate the NAND, which has already happened, so I'm not even sure this is necessary. I think the thing that's missing is um, we create the NAND which um, gets evaluated here when it gets created 
then we wire up things. And it doesn't get re-evaluated. Even though the whole circuit has changed. And when we try and evaluate things again. After wiring everything up, yeah, yeah, I think we need to use eval here. Maybe we, we need to have some kind of a force update. Why doesn't this work then? In this case, we create a new inverter gate. We set A state to false, which it already was. Has already been false. But if it has already been false, it should Ah, uh, see, I, I know what happens. I know what happens. So the NAND gets evaluated here. And it is going to evaluate to true because all the inputs are false by default. And then we wire up the output of this NAND gate, which is true at this time, to our output pin B here, and B does not get updated. So B is false, even though the NAND to which it is wired is already true. Which means that uh, in our node... When we connect something... We need to of course update the state of this node in So, how about this? Yeah. Okay. Does it work without the evil? Yep, it does. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. Shall we build a bit? I guess... I'll... Copy that. But we'll call it... Uh, circuit bit. And it let's build the JK latch first. It's a unit system. I'm pretty sure we'll need it later anyway. Fastbite! Thanks for following! Welcome to the stack. 
Okay, so, um... Yeah, I'll simply rename this uh, to JK Latch. If we write it this way, can we then use... So, we'll use uh, circuit equals described class new. And that's it. Yep, okay. And then... Let's take another look at the uh, wiring here. I really have a hard time wrapping my head around um, the circuits. So let's read this again. This combination as a whole has two inputs and one output. Um, we, uh, at the moment I'm interested in A and B. Uh, let's see. Where's the conclusion? Let's see. Uh, we have our input here. Maybe we should use a, a table for A and B. If A is false and B is false, uh, we have we'll start with false, which makes this true, and we have true and false, which makes this false. So nothing changes up here, it still is true, which means um, if both are false, this output O is going to be true. Now if A is true, true and false are going to be false. False and false is true. So we have true and true, which switches this to false. False and false is true and now it's stable. So if this is true, O is going to be false. You know what? Let's try and find a better explanation. Oh, the whole thing is a JK latch. Okay. So you have a ring oscillator which keeps toggling forever. Yeah, that's the thing, and that's where tolerance is coming. Um, so 
So just for my understanding, jQuery is basically synonymous with a uh, bit, right? So is this a what a, the the right most part is that a, a flip flop? More or less, except there's this inverter here in between. Okay. The bit one is called D type flip flop. Uh, that's basically then this here with the inverter in front, where the inverted signal of D goes to the lower NAND gate. Uh, which is more or less this here, only that uh, it's not an inverter, it's actually controlled by this set input here. Yeah, I think I need to focus on this um, until I got it, because uh, otherwise it doesn't make much sense to continue. It'll only get more complex from here. So apparently these outputs are the opposites of each other, Q and Q inverted. There's still this inverter in between. Oh, that's not the case here. Not. Immediately, at least. Um, so let's start with the D flip flop here. When the input is zero to the flip-flop, Q equals zero and Q inverted is one. When the input is one to the flip-flop, Q equals one and Q inverted equals zero. Yeah, that's all right. But what's the flip-flop? What's the flip-floppy thing in this? Because at the moment it seems just to be uh, an inverter. At least the D flip flop needs to. You you need to maintain your input. Otherwise, it'll. So there's no memory in this, is there? First, the flip flop circuit will be asynchronous or non clocked. This flip flop does not have a clock cycle, so it does not execute on a clock timing schedule. It simply executes an instruction whenever it gets the data on the data line. I don't get it. If you were to remove the NOT gate from the circuit, you would have an SR flip-flop. 
Okay, so that was my question from, from earlier. So the two uh, interconnected NAND gates are an SR flip-flop. Okay. Not a JK, but an SR set reset flip-flop. Because the SR flip-flop can produce an undefined state when both inputs are high. Yes, you can't set and reset at the same time. In this condition, SR flip-flop yields an indeterminate result. Um, yeah. The D flip-flop makes this impossible because with the D flip-flop, there is a NOT gate before all the other gates. This NOT gate makes it impossible for both inputs to be the same value. Thus, we eliminate the indeterminate condition. Mm-hmm. I get that. So, without the inverter, we'd have a set and reset line. This not gate makes it impossible. Thus, we elimin eliminate the indeterminate condition. We also eliminate another condition called the hold condition. This is when both inputs are low. This condition is less troublesome than the indeterminate condition, but it's still not necessary. Therefore, the D flip flop really is more efficient than the SR flip flop. When the input is zero, Q equals zero and Q inverted equals one. So, okay, the D flip-flop makes sure No, I don't get it either. Uh, don't get it yet. Should write it down actually. This looks promising. So the SR flip flop. We have set, reset, and we have a clock. So, when the clock is low, the flip-flop output will always be zero. If clock is high, then we need to differentiate between set and reset. By default, they are both false, so output will be false. If set is one and uh, reset is zero, we'll get a one. If set is zero and reset is a one, we'll get a zero. And if both are high, which is basically, with, which would with a simple, with the simple flip flop, this would be an impossible state or an indeterminate state. And in this case, we get a determinate output, which is in this case one.
And I guess these two NAND gates back here basically invert each other, so that Q will always be the inverse of uh, Q inverted. Uh, similar to the thought I had too, but we have an RS latch, no flip flop. Yeah, uh, it's really hard if, if uh, terminology gets confused, that then confuses me. NAND gate SSR flip flop. I think the first time I did electronics was back when I was 11 or so. And uh, once I got to these more complex circuits with flip-flops, I never got these. I have no idea why. Maybe because I'm trying to juggle all these plates in my mind instead of writing things up. Okay. SR flip flops. Wait. Let's start by. Start at the top. SR flip flops are the basic element of the sequential circuit. Flip flop is a digital circuit. Okay, I'm starting single. Let's find something. That's in a more. Precise English. Flip flop types, their conversion and applications. That's pretty fresh here. Okay. Flip flop is a circuit that maintains a state until directed by input to change. So we have an SR flip-flop where we have a clock signal that's necessary to enable either the S or the R line. Mm. truth table is that? Where you have two lines per combination. RS, JK, D and T. I guess that's... Here we are missing... Are we missing the, the clock column here? <sighs> I'm getting annoyed. Simple set reset latches. Okay, let's try that. Hope that uh, Wikipedia has this in a in an understandable way. Flip flops can be divided into common types. SR. D, T, and J, K. Behavior of a particular type can be described by what is termed the characteristic equation, which derives the next, after the next clock pulse output, Q next, in terms of the input signals and the current output Q. Okay. Simple set reset latches. When using static gates as building blocks, the most fundamental latch is the simple SR latch, where S and R stand for set and reset. Okay. Um, SR nor latch. Let's take the NAND latch, because that's what we're going to use. The circuit shown below is a basic NAND latch. Uh, and by that we mean this here. An SR not latch constructed from... 
cross-coupled NAND gates. I guess that's that. Inputs are generally designated as an R. Because the NAND inputs must normally be logic 1 to avoid affecting the latching action. The inputs are considered to be inverted in this circuit. Or active low. Circuit uses feedback to remember. Yeah, okay. And retains its logical state even after the controlling input signals have changed. When the S and R inputs are both high, feedback maintains the Q outputs to the previous state. So I think one thing that might conf be confusing me is that um, inputs are inverted. different with nor maybe we'll st we should start with that so set reset zero is the hold state reset high means q next is going to be zero and uh, for set and reset low means q next will retain the state of Q. Okay. And if I set... If I uh, get a set signal, Q next is, of course, going to be 1. And if I set both signals, that's not allowed, because um, well, that's uh, contradictory. Okay. So, with the NAND... I guess we get the opposite. Both lines low is not allowed. If reset, no, if uh, set is low, we'll get a one. If reset is low, we'll get a low. And if both are high, we have the hold state. Okay, I get that. That's also because uh, that, that's a good idea to designate these inputs with S inverted and R inverted, while Q then is... Um, uh, in, in normal logic, uh, where high means set and uh, low means not set. And um, I wonder why so that's so that's how this works, right? Yeah. So that's our SR NAND latch. But by putting these two in front, I guess we'll get normal behavior back again. Okay, let's do another exercise. Let's use A and B as our set and reset lines, right? So, both high would be the um, default state, or the, the hold state? No, the... Wait, um, A low means we want to set this bit. A low, and this low 
will be inverted and O is going to be high. Okay, this high goes down here. So here we have a high and a low, which triggers a high here, which goes up here. Wait. No, we can't have both low. That's the uh, forbidden state, right? Yeah. That's why uh, this now started to oscillate. Okay, let's assume this works as a as an inverted uh, SR latch. Now, if we get an input signal and we have the set line set as well, this gets inverted and it actually leads to A being low because it's uh, inverted here. Um, at the same time, low and this set results in Uh, wait. This is low. And we said that uh, set is high. Which is high here. We have low and high. Wait. Uh, set low and uh, reset high, and that sets our bit. Yeah, okay. If we keep the set line low, and our input falls to zero, A will be high, which means this will be high too, which means this is low. high and low right no oh I'm so sorry my brain's not working do I need to use a sheet of paper or is there a truth table for this no there isn't that would be helpful actually Yeah, I guess I'll simply wait. Um, I, we have um, S, we have A, and we have B. So, um, let's say we want to set our bit, so I is 1, 
and set is 1. Which means A will be 0. And B... Uh, will be... Um, that's uh, a 0 and a 1 will be zero, so B will be one, which is the inverse, so um, our RS or SR latch gets set by this. Now, um, let's assume the input drops, but uh, we don't use um, set anymore. I want to test if the flip-flop retains its value. Um, uh, I and S are both zero, which means A will be one and here we have a one and a zero which will be a one and one one in this case for the NAND gate means no change in our flip-flop okay yeah I think uh, it was the um this inversion of the set and reset behavior which um, needs to be basically something like this here and that means this is the actual set behavior and this is the hold behavior and uh, just for completeness sake if we uh, set i to zero and Pull up the set line. That means um, we have zero and one, which uh, is zero inverted is one. And here we have one and one, which inverted is zero. Now we have um, uh, set inverted. Uh, the the real set is zero, and the reset is one, which means the the flip flop will be. Um, reset. Okay. Yeah, that was helpful. Okay. Um. Okay. Now, do we model the this uh, SR NAND latch on its own, or don't we? I think we should just to test it. Hmm. We can always extract it if we need to. Let's build the whole um, bit here. Let's build an actual bit. So, let's rename this again. We'll call it a bit. So, we create a circuit. And, um... We'll say... Circuit... I... State... 
Speak what's true. Well, we need to distinguish. Uh, we can set it to 1. We'll set S to true as well, otherwise we can't set it. And we'd expect circuit Q, Q state to be true. You can even uh, introduce a variable here. Uh, we call this bit and we will set it to bit and uh, we expect it to be a bit. That means training white space, yes, okay. And then it should remember that. So if we set it to the bit and then we go back with uh, our state of S and even if we then set I to false again it should still remember its value. So that's these are two um, of the most interesting cases here, right? Let's build a bit. So, well, let's even, well, let's copy the whole thing and, and uh, delete what we don't need. So, um, do we don't have a base here. Not sure if uh, it'll work. This, uh, we have two nodes, I and S, and well, Q. Wait, how did we... Um, yeah, we did use Q, okay. We'll have I, S and Q, so that's, these are two inputs. And Q is our output. And now we need a lot of circuitry. The Markham, hey, how you doing? Welcome to the stack. Good to have you here. Um, yeah, so we are going to build our own central processing unit, our own processor, um, using basic um, digital circuits like NAND gates, for example. But uh, since I don't want to build them in uh, the real world, I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to basically build them in software, in Ruby. And that is also going to be a nice um, exercise in object-oriented Ruby, because we can model all these components as objects. So, um, we are at the point where we are going to build our own bit out of four NAND gates. I'm using the book, but how do it know as uh, the basis of my work? And uh, here you can see the circuit diagram for a single bit that can remember its value. Um, 
So we need to create four NAND gates and wire them up as in this diagram. And that should give us um, a single bit that can remember its state one or zero. And it works like this. Uh, I is going to be the desired state. But this state will only be changed if S is set as well. Otherwise, I can change as many times as it wants. The output O, or Q as I've called it in my code, will stay the same unless S is set. Then um, O in this diagram will be equal to I. If, set, if S is not set, O will retain its previous state. And that's how a bit works, right? So let's go to our code. Now, we need a lot of stuff. Um, unfortunately, these um, NANDs don't really have uh, their own names. These two in the back here uh, are basically a an SR not flip-flop together. I mean, we could just number them, but um, I guess I call this one the I NAND, this one the S NAND, and this is the S FF, so the the set flip flop NAND, and the uh, the I. Um, yeah, let's let's uh, let's just code it like this. Um, so we call it the I NAND, and that's going to be a gate NAND new. We'll have the S NAND. We'll have the SR NAND one. Or I SR NAND. Doesn't really matter in the end, but uh should be able to distinguish them somehow. And now we need to wire them up. Let's take a look at the diagram again. So, our I is wired to both I and S are wired to the first flip-flop. Which means that uh, we we'll use I and connect it to the I NAND A. And we we'll connect S to the I NAND A. Ah, I NAND. You know what? If I don't really... If I can't identify them properly, let's just use their numbers. So, that's going to be NAND1. So, that's the first one. The output of NAND1 and S is going into NAND2. So I, uh, that's of course uh, I, no, uh, NAND1, C is going to NAND2A. And 
S is going to amount to B. Then, the output of NAND1 goes into NAND3. So NAND1C goes to NAND3A. So NAND1C is connected to two NANDs, two and three, yeah, okay. And um, NAND4 is going to NAND3. NAND4C is going to NAND3B. And finally, NAND4. The output of NAND3 is going to NAND4A and uh, the output of uh, NAND2 is also going to NAND4. And now we have to wire up the whole um, assembly. Uh, we'll wire up I. Wait, uh, I is going just into NAND1. S is already wired up as well to NAND1 and NAND2. That's all. Yep, so we just need to grab the output of NAND3 and use that as our output. So um, we'll use NAND3 and connect that to um, Q. Whew. So, uh, what's the problem here? Use normal case for variable numbers. Oh, you mean like this? Yeah, okay. Interesting. So let's see um, our test. Just sets I and S and tests if Q is right. Oh, I'm 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 so anxious what this will will result in. Oh dear. Well. Let's see. No. What? Uh, we're missing a test here, right? Where's our spec file? Oh, wait. That's not gate and and right? No. Uh, where's our bit? Doesn't run the test, but why doesn't it? Um, wait. Back. Lip. Shake it a bit. Strange. Mm. 
Yes, uh, the bit needs to have... Something's not right. Um... Oh, hey, Julian! Hey, how you doing? Happy to see you. How's life? Now that is strange. Why doesn't it exercise these tests? Oh yeah, of course, it needs to be renamed. It's a bit spec, of course. And now we get lots of failures. Uh, not the least that... Um... Okay. State doesn't work in uh, circuit. I state. And different method state for nil nil class in bit spec 10. Uh, let's see. We do describe class and then we set. And I. I S and Q. Oh yes, of course. Um, I guess we. That's this is not a gate base. That's that's going to be the base for everything, huh? All these components need to be set up and evaluated. Yeah. Okay. Hmm, so we, well, what are we going to call this? Component? Circuits and gates are components, right? Yeah, for the time being, let's call this component. Which means... Um, that's not going to have a namespace. It's just going to be a component. Oh dear, that sounds a little bit hectic, huh? Testing in production. I just noticed we've been going on for a while out uh, now, and um, I probably have to end this pretty soon. So this is going to be a component. Inverter is a component. The NAND is a component. And the bit is also going to be a component. Yeah, now we are... file join we need to find a better way to do this so like this that's the end Inverter and the NAND. 
Okay, it all works except the bit. Doesn't remember. It does set. But it doesn't remember. Okay. This might be a little bit involved to come to debug, but uh, let's see how our test looks like. So it the setting does work. Let's try the resetting as well. Let's try the first two simple cases. So bit is going to be false. So this both works, but um, I guess One works, the other doesn't. That looks like something's leaking here. Mm -hmm. So... Let's do some sanity check. We have four NAND gates. I and S are connected to NAND 1. The output of NAND 1, together with S again, uh, wired to NAND2. The output of NAND1 and the output of NAND4 are wired to NAND3. And the output of NAND2 with the output of NAND3 are wired to NAND4. And then we'll wire the output of NAND3 to our pin Q. Okay. I guess we could use our component... Um, a component class to debug a little bit. That's an interesting uh, exercise. How do we debug this? How can we get some kind of sensible log output that shows us all these state transitions? That's, I think that's something that we'll save for next time. I've been doing this for more than two hours now. I guess it's time to take a break and uh, leave this um, to settle for a bit. And... Um, I'll be back on Tuesday next week, where we are going to continue this. And I guess by then I'll have thought of, of a good way to debug this and to see how each component is influencing the other um, until we finally get some kind of output. All right, so this was fun. This was the first time um, uh, working on this project, um, apart from a little bit that I prepared. And um, yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. I hope you did too. And um, maybe uh, there's someone we can raid. Let me take a look.
Well, there's always finite singularity. So... Yeah, uh... We could also raid RWX Rob, who's doing great DevOps stuff as well. Yeah, let's let's go to Rob. All right, folks, that's it for today. I hope you had fun, and I hope to see you again next Tuesday at 2 p.m. Irish time, 1 p.m. Uh, UTC. And um, I'll uh, switch to my standby scene, and then we'll raid RWX Rob. Until next time, take care. Oops, almost tipped over my coffee cup. Cheers.